Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ramesh Subramanyam. I'm the Director General of the Southeast Asia Department. On behalf of ADB, uh, we are delighted to welcome all of you to this session on financing green recovery for a low carbon and climate resilient Southeast Asia. At the outset, I wish to thank immensely the UK government, particularly the FCDO and the Green Climate Fund for co-hosting this event with us. And Excellency Minister Cleverly, um, also this is the first occasion for uh, us to see you. Huge event. So thank you so much for the entire COP26. Uh, due to COVID restrictions, we are organizing this event uh, in a hybrid format. Speakers uh, participating here in person, as well as we have video messages. So, uh, and because also of the logistics constraints, um, we will do this in two parts. We will first begin with President uh, Masa Asakawa, uh, then followed by Minister Cleverly, then Ibu Srimulyani, Minister of Finance of Indonesia, uh, then the uh, GCF head, uh, Mr. Yannick. Then we will go for the uh, second part. But I wanted to give you a quick intro to what this session is all about. Um, we will hear how partners support uh, from development partners, support can be leveraged in innovative ways to catalyze financing for NDCs and green recovery efforts, in this case, particularly focused on Southeast Asia. Of course, what we are talking today can also be replicated in other parts of the world. We will also hear announcements of support for an ASEAN Green Recovery Platform, or GRP, which is linked to the uh, ADB managed and ASEAN countries and ADB owned ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility, or ACGF, which is part of the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund. Uh, ACGF, uh, thanks to Indonesia, Malaysia, and a number of all the other ASEAN countries, it's a truly unique regional cooperation efforts and brings all Southeast Asian countries together to promote green finance. Since 2021, uh, ACGF uh, has become the anchor of the regional effort to promote green recovery, perhaps the first such green recovery initiative uh, in the region. We have a very distinguished panel of speakers today, beginning with President uh, Masa Asakawa of ADB. Uh, then we have M M Minister James Cleverly, Minister of State at the FCDO, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of the UK. Following that, Minister Srimalyani Indravati, who is also ADB's Governor for Indonesia, Minister of Finance, um, and Minister Arifin Tasrif, Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources. And we have, of course, um, the Green Climate Fund Executive Director, uh, Yannick Lamarak, and we are also awaiting Remy uh, Rio, the CEO of AFD who will be joining us. So with that, without further ado, I'm going to request President Masa Asakawa to share opening remarks. President Masa, please. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, your excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would like to begin uh, by extending my deep, deep appreciation to Minister Sriuniani Indrawati, uh, Minister Arifin uh, Tasrif, uh, Minister Grace Hu, uh, Deputy Secretary General uh, Zabinda uh, Shin, uh, for their support today. I also would like to thank our partners, the Right Honorable uh, James uh, Cleverly, uh, Executive Director uh, Yannick Gremelik, uh, Chief Executive Officer Remy Rudu, uh, Chief Executive Officer and General Manager Dario Scanapieco, and Director General Kong Dodds. We meet today. Uh, because of our shared commitment uh, to promote a green recovery in ASEAN. I am encouraged that your uh, ongoing efforts and pledges of support will help to turn the tide of, the cri of this uh, climate uh, crisis. Well, let me uh, in briefly discuss uh, with you why our work together uh, to uh, secure robust financing for a green recovery in ASEAN. Uh, is so vital. ADB views uh, this work as a key component of our overall commitment to take bold and urgent action against climate uh, change. 
I, as I announced, you, you may know this, but uh, I announced last month uh, we are raising our ambition uh, to deliver 100 billion US dollars uh, in cumulative uh, climate financing between 2019 and 2030, including, including 34 billion dollars in cumulative adaptation and resilience uh, investments. So the remaining 66 is for mitigation. Uh, we have also updated our energy policy, which is very old, very outdated, uh, to formally withdraw, formally withdraw uh, from financing new coal-fired power generation and support the development of sustainable and resilient energy systems in line with the Paris Agreement. And tomorrow, tomorrow morning, we will launch our Energy Transition Mechanism, ETM partnership, uh, which will use the branded finances uh, to accelerate the retirement, retirement of ex or repurposing of existing coal fire power plants. So my friends, uh, as you know well, Southeast Asia uh, is one of the most vulnerable uh, region in the world to climate impacts. Uh, the uh, changing climate has affected our communities, infrastructure, food security, and the well-being of our people. Uh, amid these unfortunate developments, uh, we face a unique window of opportunity to promote a greener and more inclusive future by investing uh, smartly in ASEAN's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. To get us on this brighter path, uh, we need ambitious climate projects to be scaled up uh, to meet national determined contributions and NDCs. Uh, we also need to address the key challenges of financing. ADB estimates uh, that developing Asia uh, needs $1.7 trillion US dollars per year to support climate resilient inf infrastructure. ASEAN countries alone uh, need 210 billion US dollars uh, per year, but they currently face an estimated funding gap of over 100 billion per year. Countries also face uh, heavy uh, physical space constraints, of course, due to uh, huge expenditures related to the pandemic. So, to bridge this huge infrastructure fi funding gap, uh, it is clear that private investment need to be scaled up. Uh, let me uh, briefly uh, mention how ADB is addressing this uh, important need through the ASEAN uh, Cre Green Recovery Platform. Uh, the platform uh, brings together partners uh, to invest alongside ADB's own financing. Uh, with a purchase of 665 million uh, US dollars from the UK government, thank you, uh, the Green uh, Climate Fund, the European Union, uh, the Casse Depositi uh, Prestiti, uh, the Green Recovery uh, Platform. Uh, uh, the Green uh, Recovery Platform will de-risk investments and catalyze 7 billion uh, in public and private capital for green infrastructure projects. So leverage is uh, about 10 times. It will also provide technical assistance uh, to improve uh, the bank, uh, bankability of investments, uh, build a robust uh, project pipeline uh, for the region and support the de development of green capital markets. The green recovery platform uh, will be linked uh, to the ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility, ACGF, uh, and the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund, which is a regional vehicle owned by ASEAN governments and ADB, and managed by ADB. Partnerships under this platform, new platform uh, will complement uh, the $1.4 billion in co-financing that has already uh, been pitched towards the ACGF by ASEAN governments. ADB Agence France de Development, the European Investment Bank, KFW, and the government of Korea also contributed. Let me close uh, by saying that ADB looks forward to working with our partner governments, the uh, private sector, 
and all stakeholders as the climate bank for Asia and the Pacific. I look forward to you hearing uh, your views about how we can make our shared vision of a swift and green recovery a reality in ASEAN. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, President Massa, for sharing those perspectives, as well as announcing the launch of the Green Recovery Platform. May I now request His Excellency Minister James Cleverly, please. Sir, over to you. Uh, f thank you, Mr. President, uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ASEAN countries are reaching new heights of economic growth, and it's an incredibly exciting time for us to work together. But as we celebrate those highs, we must make sure they don't come with the traditional lows of the past, that is, pollution, habitat loss, and rising greenhouse gas emissions. The need to invest in green infrastructure has never been stronger. And as we, re as we rebuild from this devastating pandemic, we must make sure that we do so sustainably. And now is our window of opportunity. The ambition shown to catalyze $7 billion for a green recovery across ASEAN is truly remarkable. And I pay, I pay tribute to the uh, Asian Development Bank and regional governments for their vital support through the Green Recovery Fund and the ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility. The UK's relationship with ASEAN is key to delivering our shared ambitions for a cleaner, greener future. That's why I'm pleased to announce that we will provide up to 110 million pounds to support a green recovery by establishing the UK ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility. Now that is a mouthful. Um, this will be <laughs> this will be a new source of lending to ASEAN governments and a source of technical expertise, including from the UK. Legal expertise will be targeted at removing legal bottlenecks, preventing investment in green technology, as well as funding new green recovery strategies. It will finance projects from wind farms to electric buses and cars. It was only a, a few months ago that the UK became ASEAN's first new dialogue partner in 25 years. And that was a landmark moment for our tilt towards the Indo-Pacific. We are deepening our ties with the region all the time on green projects, security cooperation, tech and science uh, partnerships, and on international law. Our support for the UK ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility, it's still a mouthful, isn't it, <laughs> is yet another demonstration of our long-term commitment to working in partnership. And that must also include partnerships with the private sector to support green infrastructure. With public budgets under severe strain due to the impact of the pandemic, we must find innovative ways to bridge the gap via private finance. This is a key focus for the UK. As the first major economy to pass a target of net zero by 2050 into law, our support for green finance facility will assist ASEAN governments to partner with the private sector. It will bring opportunities to collaborate and share UK expertise on green technologies. And the City of London will be an important source of financing for green infrastructure. There will be a new partnership with the London Stock Exchange to issue new green bonds under the new initiative. There is so much that we can do together. The UK will keep building the links between our countries as we work together to deliver on our Paris Agreement commitments. And I thank you all for representing ASEAN today, for your valued support and collaboration. And we will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder as we address these issues of such profound importance to us all. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Excellency Cleverly, for sharing those perspectives as well as for your support uh, to, um, to, for the ASEAN countries through ADB. Thank you very much. May I now request um, Her Excellency Minister Dr. Srimalyani Indravati, please. Minister. Thank you, Ramas. President Asakawa, uh, Minister uh, of, uh, for ASEAN at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, UK. Uh, the Executive Director of uh, climate, Green Climate Fund, Pak uh, Arifin Trasif, uh, my colleague, uh, Minister, and uh, Honorable Ladies and Gentlemen. It's really uh, a pleasure for me to be here to also participate in the launching of the ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility. I think this is one of the very important and uh, attractive initiative which is initiated by both ADB working together with other bilateral donor. Let me share you uh, how the climate change is actually a threat, a real threat for the ASEAN economy. Climate change, it's become a spotlight and serious priority agenda for the region. This agenda, we are all recognize, require a huge uh, financing as well as technology. Climate change is a common threat and would become an intergenerational uh, issue or problem. And the impact uh, will uh, create it, uh, a setback for many of the progress which is uh, now being made. Indonesia is the biggest uh, country in the ASEAN uh, region, uh, also suffer from this climate change. Flood, drought, as well as the rising sea level is definitely threatening the life and livelihood. As much as we are all aware, the Southeast Asia has the capability as the fastest developing region. But in fact, also a region that also exposed physically to the climate risk. In addition to the COVID-19, which is currently still an issue that we are all need to deal with, and that's definitely also require a huge public sources to deal with to recover the economy, as well as addressing the issue of health. Climate, climate hazard is definitely also the top uh, uh, priority for all of us. ASEAN countries pay attention to this threat. And in the context of the post-pandemic recovery, a sustainable growth is definitely need to be designed. In this case, we are very pleased to see the initiative by the ADB, President Asakawa, as well as many uh, bilateral donor country to initiate as well as to design this recovery fund for not only ASEAN, but also the world. Let, let us talk about how we are going to design the transition toward uh, low carbon or even net zero emission for all of us. For a many developing and emerging country, we definitely need to design a just and affordable transition. We can always have an idea and goals, but if it is not affordable, then we cannot achieve that goal. Just mean also that it can be bear the burden evenly, or in this case, differently across the uh, across country as well as within country in which you have a population with a different purchasing power. Indonesia, in this case, part of the ASEAN country. Within the ASEAN, we've already initiated ASEAN disaster risk financing, which also creating a mechanism for the ASEAN country to be able to address the issue of natural disaster risk and especially when they are hard hit, and how they are going to be able to recover. That's including insurance. We also have the, within the financial sector and capital market, which is previously also mentioned as a very important uh, institution and sector to facilitate the financing. Financial sector regulator is already within ASEAN, developing a taxonomy. That is how we are going to map the risk and source of financing on a sustainable level. Indonesia as a member of ASEAN country is also committed 
uh, for this climate change agenda. Currently, the government has already updated our, our nationally determined contribution with the long-term strategy for low carbon and climate resilience by 2050. That's including, most importantly, which my colleague Minister of Energy is uh, going to talk about the energy transition mechanism. We talk a lot about coal just in the past few days. I was in the room for the G20, and now today, I think everybody talking about uh, coal. And Indonesia is among the biggest also within our own power uh, mix now, the coal, around 65%, as well as we are also a producer of coal. So for us, this is a commitment which definitely have huge implication fiscally and financially. Without a credible design, it will be impossible for us to do the transition to a lower energy. And that's why the issue of just and affordable is going to be very critical. My colleague minister can announce anything, but the implication on the fiscal side is on my side. And that is very critical for us to bridge this gap between the commitment on the climate and the financing in an affordable way without actually diluting or in this case weakening the ambition. But we really need to be very, very uh, realistic as well as credible in designing this transition. So low carbon transition is definitely not free. It definitely has a huge implication, but we can calculate and we can manage as well as we can financing it. Today's initiative of this Green uh, Recovery Fund in which the ASEAN catalytically uh, create a catalytic role by mobilizing fin funding from both ADB as well as some several bilateral institutions to be able to attract more private sector with the ratio of one time stands. I think this is also a quite uh, impressive. We really have to see this would be delivered. And that's why the role of capital market is gonna be very critical. And uh, for Indonesia, we are really pleased to hear and to actually uh, learning uh, of this initiative. Indonesia, in order for us to be able to also creating a credible support for this climate change commitment in the NDC. On the fiscal side, we already creating what we call it a comprehensive fiscal framework to support this climate change commitment. And the instrument that we are introduced with is the fiscal, it could be in the form of taxation incentive, subsidy, for those which is going to be like uh, uh, provided a support, as well as now we are talking about the energy transition mechanism in which we are requiring to have a pool of fund for retiring coal earlier and substituting or producing a more renewable energy, which definitely require a huge capital. Many of the renewable energy requiring a front load capital spending, which is significant. And that definitely a challenge that need to be overcome. We also, in this case, uh, providing uh, many of what you call it, uh, uh, instrument like issuing bonds, green bonds, which is actually issued in London already, some of it, uh, which is also hopefully can create a financing instrument which is credible enough linking to the commitment of the climate change. This is still a very early. Indonesia since 2018 to 2021 issued 3.5 billion US dollar green bond. But I just want to share you here that the price that we have to pay for these bonds is not actually much more competitive than the regular bond. Meaning on the capital market, they don't appreciate the green color in our bonds. That needs something to be continue advocating because then you are not really seeing the commitment which can be translated into a real price and yield on the bonds. I do hope now with the commitment of many financial institution that we're creating much, much huge and uh, depth, the depth of the source of 
bonds fin financing on a green level that will then creating a much more competitive price as well as yield. So in this case, Indonesia also is going to host or to become a president of the G20 meeting starting this December. And climate change, including climate finance, is going to be one of the most important priority policy issue. Financing, definitely also very critical. As also my role as a co-chair for the coalition of finance minister for climate finance globally, more than 68 countries already within this coalition, this is going to be one of also the most important task force. So this ASEAN Catalytic Green Climate Fund definitely will create one set of example, concrete example, how this financing of the green commitment can be delivered. With every dollar from the public fund, you can attract more than seven dollars from the private uh, fund. That definitely will increase the availability of financing, which is definitely required for the climate change commitment. Uh, so uh, in short, I would like to also congratulate and welcome this ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility. And we do hope that can, this can also encourage even more many facility that can be created that also link the private sector pool of fund, trillion dollar over there, that can then finance uh, our global commitment to uh, uh, avoid the uh, climate change calamity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ibani, for uh, the very thoughtful perspectives as always. And we will be seeking your advice as we go through with the implementation, particularly on the leveraging aspects that you mentioned. Now let me request our co-host, uh, the Executive Director uh, for the Green Climate Fund, Mr. Yannick Glamarek. Uh, please, let me give you the Many thanks. The, Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, dear colleagues, uh, good afternoon. The, it's really great to have you here in our pavilion. The, um, the COVID-19 pandemic brought us to either a tipping point or a turning point in our fight against climate change. The way we have to design and implement the, the economic stimulus measures to recover from the pandemic will either entrench our dependence on fossil fuel, as we did in 2009, or will enable us to accelerate uh, efforts toward low emission climate resilient uh, development. The, uh, the, less, the latest uh, UNEP uh, report uh, on the emission gap basically says that we are not on track to uh, achieve uh, the goals of the Paris Agreement. We are right now on the trajectory of up to three degrees Celsius. According to some estimates, if we could green the economic stimulus measures that have been designed and are to be designed to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, we could get back on track to achieve the Paris Agreement's goal. And so it's maybe the greatest opportunity or the greatest risk that, the, that humanity is facing right now. Are we or not to be able to uh, green our economic stimulus measures? We have at least two challenges to do so. The first one, is to ensure that uh, the economic stimulus measures are green and climate resilient. According again to UNEP, uh, less than a fifth of all the economic uh, stimulus measures that are currently known can be considered as green and climate resilient. So there is definitely a lot of work to do in that direction. The second challenge is that why G20 countries have been used, have been able to use non-orthodox monetary policies, basically printing money, thanks to an inflation under control, to inject over $15 trillion of liquidity in the economy to, uh, to, to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. Most developing countries do not have this capacity. We do not have the fiscal space to print money. A developing country that uh, today will print money we'll see its, its interest rate go through the roof. And actually, even without printing money, we have already seen a dramatic increase in interest rate. 
And so COVID-19 for developing countries is a humanitarian crisis that has become an economic crisis and a debt crisis and a fiscal crisis. And so it's a double challenge if we want to make sure that so economic, the economic recovery in Asia, in Asia is green. And the GCF was extremely concerned about it last year. And so we basically adopted a three-prong approach. The first prong is that so we engage with all our accredited entities, our 113 accredited entities, to look at how what we could do to make sure that so the pandemic does not affect the delivery of our ongoing portfolio. Because our portfolio is all about energy efficiency, renewable energy, restoration of ecosystems, sustainable agriculture, exactly the type of job creating activities you want to see in order to recover from the pandemic. So the first thing was that we really wanted to make sure that we will continue injecting liquidity. The second thing that we did is that so we used a, a very flexible facility, a grant facility, to basically provide some technical assistance to countries to uh, craft uh, green economic stimulus measures and explore new uh, me financing mechanisms to be able to implement them without increasing our debt burden. And the third one is that we basically send a strong signal to all our partners saying, please help the government you serve to accelerate the preparation of the projects uh, to the Green Climate Fund that will support a green uh, economic recovery. And we were delighted when uh, the governments of uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Thailand, Malaysia, and the Philippines, with the assistance of the Asian Development Bank, came to us three or four months after we had sent this message. This was almost immediately, with basically a very innovative mechanisms in order to promote a green recovery in Southeast uh, Asia. And uh, we definitely very much uh, like this idea of using public money in a catalytic manner to leverage seven billion dollars of uh, private investment in order to finance 20 priority uh, investment, low emission climate resilient investment. And I fully agree with you, Minister. If this work, we might have one more model that uh, we could reproduce uh, uh, elsewhere. And, the, uh, and I also would like to applaud the initiative of the Asian Development Bank to establish a green recovery platform. The, for us, de facto, you are establishing a syndicate. What in the private sector would be called a syndicate. And it's exactly what we want. The times of the pilot projects is over. No, we need, we need, we need to be able to move massive amount of finance as fast as possible. By syndicating, we can reach size. And because GCF is capital agnostic and partner agnostic. Capital agnostic, we are financed by taxpayer. Thank you very much, UK, which is the largest financial contributor to the Green Climate Fund. The, because we are financed in grant by taxpayers, we can use this grant uh, for anything, for any kind of grant and non-grant instrument. So from grant to extending the tenure of commercial loans to guarantees to equities. So far as we are willing to join a syndication platform and basically take the type of finance that other partners uh, cannot uh, mobilize. And because we are partner agnostic, all in all we work with more than 200 uh, partners from the largest commercial banks in the world, MDBs, to, uh, civil, to UN agencies, civil society organizations working at the community level. We can also normally bring a number of people to, people to the syndication platform. So in a sense, thank you very much and congratulations to the Asian Development Bank for this very innovative approach. Thank you so much, Executive Director uh, Glamaric, uh, for, for those words, as well as uh, equally important for your support for us. Now we will hear from uh, BAPAK uh, Minister Arifin Tasrif. We've heard finance perspectives, but the most important minister and the important ministry from an implementation point of view for the Asian Development Bank in Indonesia is the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. So let's hear from Minister Arifin, please. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. Excellencies, distinguished uh, participants, thank you for the opportunities. Allow me to say something. Yeah. I'm not a financial man. I have my boss there. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm only the, the executor, hard workers. Well, uh, yeah, we know that the global pandemic really impact the economic landscapes. According to the International Energy Association that uh, during the pandemic, investment in the energy dropped almost 20%. It means, uh, they said they mentioned about $400 billion. So we, we missed a the chance. There is an advantage or dis also disadvantage. The, at the advantage one is due to the pandemic, the new project for fossil will stop, cannot be continued. Yeah, but there's this advantage that also impacting to the renewable program. In terms of fashion, this crisis must be the opportunities to rearrange energy composition and accelerating greener shares of energy supply through ASEAN plan of action for energy cooperation. This plan aims to accelerate energy transition and strengthen energy resilience by increasing innovation and cooperation and enhancing targets of renewable energy and energy intensity. As one of the ASEAN members, Indonesia consistently delivers message from Southeast ASEAN regions, among others. Energy transition acceleration to support economic recovery. Last week, I just attended the Singapore International Energy Weeks. Unfortunately, during those events, we have opportunity to sign three memorandum of understanding to supply Singapore with the solar energy uh, electricity for a couple gigawatt for next couple of years. So lucky, ASEAN, we have a good cooperation among us. We also have uh, ASEAN Supergrid project, yeah, which is uh, connecting, uh, suppose it's connecting through the island and also from Indonesia to Singapore and Mal Malaysian island. So I think uh, Indonesia, we have a huge potential of renewable energy. In our calculation, we just indicate our potential about 600 gigawatt. But a couple of days ago, when we have a meeting in London, because uh, we joined the Mentari program, we indicate that our wind power resources are much, much bigger than what we predict. So it's really big potential. And then I'm lucky in the last couple of days, I'm, I'm having a chance to visit two locations of wind power plant. One in Brighton, offshore. And then just yesterday, we visit widely onshore project. So it reflects that the new the technology will support the acceleration of the transition energy. We have the resources. We have to develop infrastructure, means the transmission system. And then the most important thing is the fund. So green financing is really important for us. Recently, we are just, uh, we are just issuing our government procurement plan for the next 10 years, which is dominated by renewable energy. About 22 gigawatt will be used renewable energy coming from several resources. Yeah, as I mentioned to you, we have solar, yeah, we have wind, we have geothermal, we have also hydro, and even undercurrent or tidal. We need a proven economic technology in order to allow us to utilize this. This energy not only going to be used in our country, but also we can share to our brother country in ASEAN. And then we need such kind of transmission in order to connect that. Well, uh, we appreciate the ADB 
F4, proposing ETM, energy transition mechanism, to accelerate emission reductions in Indonesia, as well as other Asian member countries. We also have been discussing energy transition mechanism initiated by ADB and considering it's suitable to accelerate the decarbonization in Indonesia, particularly for the early retirement of CFPP. In our, in our thought right now, there are about total 9.2 gigawatt of coal fired power, power plant, then that can be retired before 2030. We divide into three, into two steps, half of it. And of course, we are, we are proced proceeding this yeah, with the support from ADB. Of course, with the strong support from Ibu Simulani. Yeah. And beside that, uh, we also preparing government regulation regarding the tariff of the renewable energy. So the new regulation, we expect it can be attractive for the investor to come yeah, in, order to, in order to allow us to execute our renewable energy program. Well, energy transitions requires numerous green projects for significantly enhancing renewable shares, energy efficiency activities, and sustainable infrastructures. Without adequate green finance, maybe we cannot turn our plans into action for achieving our enhanced NDC targets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency Minister, for those uh, perspectives. And we look forward to working with you very, very closely. Um, I seek your understanding. We have a second part of the program. We will hear two video messages, first from the European Union, uh, followed by a minister from Singapore. Uh, I'm also very glad to share with you that uh, the chief executive officer of AFD, very important partner for ADB, Mr. Remy Rio, is also with us. Uh, so. We will play the video now for the EU message followed by Singapore. Then I'll request Mr. Remy Rio to speak. Then we will have two more videos after that, including from the ASEAN Secretariat. Please. Uh, and um, I, I understand Mr. Glamarek has to leave for another uh, meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Guests, ladies and gentlemen. One of the greatest scientists ever, Albert Einstein, one said the following, look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. The thing about nature is that it has certain immutable laws. Gravity, motion, thermodynamics, try as we may, we cannot alter those laws of the universe. But what we can do is alter our response to them. And that's what COP26 is all about. The current rates of global warming threaten our very future. Even the economic slowdown triggered by COVID-19 has made almost no discernible impact on carbon emissions this past year. What the pandemic did do was to create an unprecedented opportunity for the world to join forces to build a greener, fairer, and more sustainable planet. Southeast Asia plays a crucial role in that mission. The ASEAN region is among the most vulnerable in the world to the impact of climate change. And at the same time, its greenhouse gas emissions are steeply increasing year by year. The pandemic has only made matters worse. Today, Southeast Asian countries are embarking on a green recovery, and the EU stands ready to support. The European Union recently pledged an additional 4 billion to combat climate change and 35% of our external action budget will be devoted to achieving climate change objectives. Together with our member states, we are proud to contribute 
783 million euros to the ASEAN catalytic green finance facility, including 50 million directly from the EU and uh, around 150 million euros from the European Investment Bank. The ASEAN catalytic green facility represents just the kind of innovation we need to meet the challenges before us. By bringing together the public and private sectors, it will catalyze 7 billion euros of green infrastructure across Southeast Asia. The EU and ASEAN became strategic partners in 2020, and we are proud to work together on this endeavor. If we are to combat climate change, we need to rethink our approach to infrastructure development in the context of a rapidly warming planet. We also need to rethink our approach to finance, and that's why the EU is developing a comprehensive sustainable finance strategy, which we expect to adopt towards the second half of 2022. It will assist low and middle income countries with scaling up sustainable finance by taking advantage of all the tools at our disposal, including blended finance. At this critical juncture, I would like to urge all partners, both public and private, to mobilize funds towards green, sustainable investment. We have the means to achieve a green recovery. We simply need to use them. On that note, let me leave you with a quote from one of history's other greatest scientists, Thomas Edison. He said, invention is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Colleagues, we have our inspiration. Now it's time to get to work together Let's achieve a successful outcome at COP26. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. International Partnerships of the European Commission. We will next hear a video message from uh, Mr. Grace Fu, uh, Minister for Sustainability and the Environment from Singapore. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank the ADB for the invitation, as well as the UK government and the Green Climate Fund for co-hosting this event. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has warned that without a rapid and drastic reduction in emissions, global temperature will rise above 2 degrees C in this century. The window of opportunity for us to avert irreversible damage is narrowing. Countries need to take substantive action to deliver on nationally determined contributions and work towards net zero goals. Many of the decisions we take today will have long-term implications on the trajectory of our emissions. Sustainability must therefore be at the heart of national COVID-19 economic recovery strategies. We also need to be ready for the impact of climate change. Sea level rise and extreme weather events pose an existential challenge to many countries, particularly to the over 400 million people living in low-lying coastal areas of Southeast Asia. Massive investment is needed to transit to a low-carbon and climate-resilient future. The ADB noted that Asia needs to invest US $1.7 trillion per year in infrastructure through 2030 for energy transition climate change mitigation and adaptation, and inclusive growth. Green financing plays a crucial role to channel much-needed resources to meet this demand. Today, Singapore is ASEAN's largest market for green bonds and loans, accounting for about half the market. We are pushing ahead to develop a vibrant green financing ecosystem to support Asia's sustainable transition. For example, we will invest 1.8 billion US dollars into climate-related investment opportunities. We aim to work with the financial industry to build reliable data platforms to better monitor and mobilize capital for green projects. We are setting our roadmaps for mandatory climate-related financial disclosures, starting with sectors most exposed to climate-related risks. We are helping to build capability and skill sets in the region. Given the scale and complexity of the challenge, countries cannot fight climate change alone. 
multi-stakeholder partnerships are key. We must work alongside multilateral development banks and regional partners to harness the power of finance to promote cleaner and greener forms of energy and activities that will benefit communities in Asia and beyond. We welcome ADB's initiatives such as the ASEAN Green Recovery Platform and ADB's ambition of delivering US $100 billion in cumulative climate financing to developing member countries between 2019 to 2030. Singapore is glad to partner ADB in financing initiatives. Damasic, HSBC and Clifford Capital Holdings have partnered ADB to establish a debt financing platform to support marginally bankable projects. This platform aims to boost development of sustainable infrastructure projects with focus on Southeast Asia in areas such as clean transport, renewable energy and energy storage. With 65% of Asia's projects facing bankability issues, the platform hopes to accelerate countries' sustainable development. Climate adaptation will be one focus area later. Infrastructure Asia is another homegrown institution partnering ADB. Formed in 2018 to advance the flow of private capital and expertise into Asia to support infrastructure development, the agency works with the ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility to originate climate projects, improve bankability and matching with investors. Green financing is key to bridging Asia's infrastructure gap and to achieve a green recovery. At this critical global juncture, we must mobilise capital for sustainability and to ensure that our future does not lie in the climate crisis, but in a livable planet. Thank you. Pleasure of requesting Mr. Remy Rio, the CEO of AFD, please. Good afternoon. Um, I want to thank President uh, Asakawa and Dear Massa for, for the invitation. It's a great honor to be on this stage with, uh, with you ministers um, and have the, the opportunity to, um, to express uh, um, our admiration and commend uh, the, the work, uh, the, ambitious, the ambition, the commitment made by ASEAN and its uh, member state uh, in this, uh, yes, multifaceted uh, crisis uh, we are all uh, facing wo wo worldwide. And uh, we all know that uh, on many issues, uh, Asia ASEAN countries are at the, the for forefront of this fight. And so we have, uh, we have a lot to learn. We have to invest in uh, the experience of your region, uh, um, to accompany your effort, but also to learn from the solutions that will uh, um, happen, that will be um, invented uh, uh, in your in your countries, and um, uh, AFD on behalf of, uh, of France, of course, as part of uh, Team Europe, uh, we are extremely proud uh, to partner with uh, the Asian Development Bank and to partner with uh, with your region. It makes uh, 25 years for for us. Uh, we uh, we started um, uh, we, we did a lot on climate. We started on mitigation with the the energy uh, sector. Uh, uh, ministers was referring to with these high challenges uh, you we are we are facing. Then we turn uh, to urban transportation, urban planning, and we are now turning uh, to adaptation, and also uh, because it's uh, the same and, and single issue to. Uh, uh, biodiversity uh, protection. We have to link uh, climate finance and biodiversity finance. We uh, even pledged that uh, for AFD, 30% of our climate finance will be uh, uh, nature positive uh, by uh, 2025. And so um, we have invested about 3 billion uh, for the last five years in the region, 40% of which um, being uh, being climate finance and 20% of it in cooperation with uh, ADB, which is our historic uh, and strategic partner. Um, we also commend uh, the creation of this uh, green recovery platform. I think uh, Asianik was saying uh, 
Uh, we, we all know that uh, we are not doing enough uh, in mobilizing private finance. The figures are very clear. When you look, uh, this is the missing part in the 100 billion, uh, actually. Uh, and so I heard the leaders yesterday uh, pushing uh, all of us uh, to do more. We have, uh, yes, pilots. We are doing small things. But we have to do it uh, now at scale. And it's very important that uh, each region uh, invents uh, its own mechanism so that, yes, we can uh, replicate them. So we are very happy to, uh, to be part of the, uh, the catalytic green finance facility uh, as part of this uh, platform. Uh, and we certainly we learn a lot from, from that. Um, on the project side, but also, uh, Minister, you were referring to uh, taxonomies. Uh, it's very important also that each region uh, uh, originates uh, taxonomy, that these taxonomies uh, should be consistent. <laughs> Glo globally, there are about 200 around for now. And so we have to, uh, to streamline, um, merge, and, and find a common language. Uh, why not from your... Uh, uh, ex ex experience, and I think this is uh, this platform is also a very uh, uh, clear uh, and uh, powerful example of what public development banks can do, uh, not for themselves, not by themselves, but as as a key part of the of the financial system, um, and uh, it starts with the multilateral development banks, of course, uh, because you have the legitimacy, you have the the financial um, uh, firepower and, and, and you, you have the uh, possibility to do the research and to create common instruments. But I really plea for the scheme to also embark uh, all the public development banks, uh, including uh, sub-regional, uh, national development banks. Uh, maybe you know I'm also the, the head of a club called IDFC, International Development Finance Club. We have uh, PTSMI. Uh, uh, as a member of the club, uh, very active, uh, very positive. Uh, and there are so many uh, public development banks in the Asian uh, regions. So uh, we created last year um, a movement called Finance in Common with uh, our multilateral partners uh, with the very simple idea to gather all of us. Uh, we did the research with the University of Peking. Uh, there are 530 public development banks in the world in each and every country. When you, um, when you add uh, all the financial capacities of these institutions, it amounts to uh, $2.5 trillion each year, following the government's guidance. And so we collectively are building some sort of uh, global architecture. And we were extremely proud that the G20 finance ministers meeting uh, um, in October recognized the Finance in Common movement and uh, we certainly intend, Minister, next year uh, for the, the Indonesian G20 uh, presidency to report on the progress made and, and to do way more. Because imagine that these 2.5 trillions were fully aligned uh, with the Paris Agreement. With the capacity of these institutions so deeply rooted in their constituency to mobilize also other public actors, to mobilize the private sector as uh, President Asakawa is doing right now, then we will have an answer that is at scale with the ambition of uh, COP26. Um, and we could demonstrate that uh, the, the commitments made uh, by the government so strong, especially in your region, are lending uh, to the ground in very concrete projects for the transition. So um, at your disposal, of course, to, to pursue. Uh, and this is what, uh, what AFD, with all colleagues, uh, we are doing here in Glasgow. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Rio, for those uh, remarks. We've come to the last part of the program. Kindly bear with us. We have two uh, short video messages. Uh, first from Mr. Dario Scanapieco, CEO of uh, the Italian CDP then followed by the Honorable Satvinder Singh, Deputy Secretary General of the uh, ASEAN Secretariat. Uh, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first thank the Asian Development Bank uh, for organizing this event uh, and the GCF, uh, GEF, uh, for hosting us in their COP26 pavilion. I am pleased and honored to intervene today and announce the support of Casa Deposit and Presity to the Asian Catalytic Green Finance Facility. This marks the start of an important partnership among our institution and the ADB. 
We believe that the facility represents an innovative and effective initiative to concretely accelerate the achievement of environmental and climate objectives. The facility aims to overcome barriers to the development of green infrastructure through the mobilization of public and private resources for long-term investments. Such objectives are deeply rooted in the CDP business model. In its role of national promotional institution and financial institution for development cooperation, CDP acts as a long-term investor with a public mandate to provide patient capital to the real economy. In doing so, we focus on the long-term impact of our activities and place the cooperation with international partners at the center of our strategy. In 170 years of history, CDP has consolidated a unique role in the Italian economy with a growing international perspective. CDP supports sustainable growth and puts the development of strategic infrastructures for more inclusive and resilient territories at the core of its action. 2021-2030 is the critical decade for climate and environment. We must reduce emissions by 50% this decade in order to limit global warming to 1.5 uh, Celsius above the pre-industrial levels by the end of this century. Combined uh, environmental degradation and health catastrophic biodiversity losses. To achieve this, significant investment is required in projects that contribute substantially to climate action and environmental sustainability, rather than in those with negative impacts. This managed transition to a new green economy must be conducted in a socially inclusive manner, creating opportunities and offering support to ensure that no one is left behind. Several developing countries have voiced that they would not commit to a higher climate target at COP26 unless they receive more international support, notably with regard to climate finance. And we all know that public resources alone appear to be largely insufficient. One way to cope with this would be to involve the EU and foreign governments and donors, the MDBs and the private sector to come up with multilateral initiatives in order to help the regions that are lagging behind in the climate ambition to adapt and prepare for the future. In this perspective, we believe that the partnership of CDP with ADB and the facility represents a step forward in this direction. By supporting infrastructure projects with significant impact in terms of greenhouse gases emission reduction, the facility will be central to achieve a broad spectrum of SDGs in the Asian countries. By joining the facility today with an initial investment of up to 130 million, CDP is honored to play its part in the process. The participation of CDP in the facility is possible thanks to the first joint intervention of all the actors in the Italian cooperation system. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Ecological, Ecological Transition and the Italian Agency for Development and Cooperation. In particular, thanks to the support of the Italian Ministry of Ecological Transition, CDP will be able to provide technical assistance to support the ASEAN governments to plan and develop green infrastructure projects as well as to enhance the quality of projects. These, we believe, will contribute to attract finance from impact-minded market investors. As confirmed by the success of the Financing Common Summit recently hosted by us in Rome, partnership represents the way forward to mobilize increasing volumes of good finance for the SDGs. In this perspective, CDP stands ready to play an active role in financing sustainable and inclusive infrastructure by promoting constructive partnership with the ADB and ASEAN partners and in joining forces with other public development banks to tackle today's challenge for both these and the next generation. Thank you all for your attention and wish you a fruitful afternoon of discussion. Many thanks. The president of the Asian Development The President of the Asian Development Bank, Mr. Asakawa. Your Excellencies, Ministers of the ASEAN Member States, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, 
It is with deep honor and privilege for the ASEAN Secretariat to address all of you distinguished participants. I am extremely pleased to be part of this discussion as aiming to chart the future of our region in the path to greener recovery, and more precisely, charting a future of a lower carbon region. and the hope for a better climate resiliency in Southeast Asia. Regions transition to a circular economy. Now it is for this reason that we find today's discussion extremely timely and relevant to the needs of the ASEAN region. Now, paving the way to establishing an ASEAN green recovery platform to support a much more greener infrastructure in the region is indeed a welcome development. Greener investments and technologies are certainly needed to support the ASEAN's climate transition. The proposed ASEAN Catalytic Green Finance Facility to be managed by ADB, I believe is definitely going to help the ASEAN member states in further promoting environmental sustainability and contribute in achieving our ambitious climate goals. We look forward to supporting and working with ADB in actively identifying deserving qualifiable projects and initiatives for this facility. Ladies and gentlemen, the continuous efforts towards a just and sustainable climate transition has been made by many of the ASEAN member states. The ASEAN Secretariat through the ASEAN Social Cultural Community Pillar has also made significant strides in, stri in sort of strengthening the collaborative climate actions in the region. For instance, ASEAN is basically on its way to develop the ASEAN Climate Finance Strategy in collaboration with the UNFCCC Regional Collaboration Center to enhance and to catalyze the ASEAN member states' access to climate finance and investment to sort of implement priority mitigation and adaptation actions. The initial assessments have shown that all of the ASEAN member states, they need support to cope with climate risk and to establish climate resilient development schemes and to sort of achieve some of the local mitigation and the NDC targets. The volume of Climate finance needed for the region as determined by the NDCs is estimated around USD $422 billion, moving up from now to 2030. Similarly, the ASEAN member states have also emphasized the need for a stronger climate finance support to address technological, institutional and capacity building needs, not only on climate change, but also for green recovery. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at this year's COP26, I'm proud to inform you that ASEAN will deliver the ASEAN Joint Statement on Climate Change, articulating the ASEAN Member States' common views and concerns towards a global solution to climate change and their resolve towards climate resiliency. The strong political will and commitment is critical in achieving our ambitious climate targets. This joint statement also kind of underscores the significance of the ASEAN taxonomy for sustainable finance to further mobilize climate finance and support the local mitigation and adaptation actions in a much more coherent and concrete manner. ASEAN is strongly committed to address this major challenge with the support of all of our valuable partners. I wish to recognize the Asian Development Bank for its commitment and these efforts to keep this as a matter of priority and in continuously supporting the ASEAN member states and our region. I'm extremely confident that our strong relationship has built a strong foundation that's going to help us to shift towards a decarbonized economy beyond COP26. Ladies and gentlemen, indeed, the stronger political will, the closer cooperation, the heightened political awareness, these are all important solutions to the serious problems we are confronted with. I believe that our discussions today 
are going to provide a pronounced opportunity for us to establish stronger bonds and identify uh, very innovative ideas for further collaboration. Moving forward, our region actually needs coordinated actions to restore our growth and stability with a much more focus on climate challenges. And on this note, the ASEAN region actually truly looks forward to a further strengthened cooperation with ADB and all of the ASEAN partners, including the fostering of stronger public-private partnerships in order to access funds and also to catalyze uh, deep technical assistance that's needed to support us in our green recovery. And of course, helping us to achieve a much more cleaner and a lot more climate resilient ASEAN region. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Minister Shimulyani, Minister Arifin, uh, Mr. Rio, as well as President Asakawa, and Minister Cleverly, and the Executive Director of Green Climate Fund, and the others who spoke. Uh, so thank you all for joining. Now we are on to implementation, 90% perspiration. And as Sibu Srimulyani said, there is a lot that needs to be done to leverage. Thank you all so much for joining. I'm going to request those on stage as well as VP Saeed for a quick photo, and then we will conclude. Thank you.